Hi, my name is Jake Herndon. I am a math tutor from Chicago, and today I'm going to do a little bit of real analysis. So this video is called An Application of Balzano Weierstrass, and I'm going to prove that continuous functions on closed intervals are bounded. So first let me say precisely what the theorem I'm going to prove is, and I'm also going to talk about what the ingredients are for the proof. In this video, I will prove the following. Let a and b be real numbers with a smaller than b, then every continuous function whose domain is the closed interval from a to b is bounded. There are lots of proofs of this theorem, so I'm just going to give one proof. The main ingredient in today's proof is the balzano weierstrass theorem. So let me remind you what that says. Uh, usually when you're studying real analysis, this is one of the first theorems that you cover. So I'm expecting you've already seen it. So this should be a reminder. The bolzano weierstrass theorem is the statement that every bounded sequence of real numbers has a convergent subsequence. So I'm not going to prove that here. I'm just going to use that to prove this other theorem that every continuous function on a closed interval is bounded. The proof that I'm going to give will also use a few other facts from real analysis, so let me remind you of a couple things. Uh, it's also going to use the fact that continuity is equivalent to sequential continuity. So just to spell that out, here's what that means. Let x and y be subsets of uh, the real numbers. A function f from x to y is continuous at c in x, if and only if, for every sequence x sub n in x which converges to c, the sequence f of x sub n converges to f of c. So another way to say that is uh, the continuous functions are the functions that preserve convergence and also preserve limits. So I will also use the fact that any convergent sequence must be bounded. So that's one of the basic facts about uh, convergent sequences, is that they always have to be bounded. And the general structure of the proof that I'm going to give is by contraposition. So remember that the contrapositive of the statement A implies B is the statement not B implies not A. These two statements have the same truth value, so proving one gives you the other. Sometimes it's easier to prove one than the other one. Okay, if all of that looks like stuff you have already seen, then you're ready for the proof. So uh, I hope you like the proof. I think it's pretty cute. It's short, too. So here's the theorem once again. Let a and b be real numbers with a smaller than b, and every continuous function on the closed interval from a to b is bounded. And the proof goes like this. The theorem says, if f is continuous, then f is bounded. So the contrapositive is this. If f is not bounded, then f is not continuous. So that's what we're going to prove. So to start that off, let f be a function which is not bounded. So what does that mean? For any n in the natural numbers, there is some x sub n in the domain of f, with the absolute value of f of x sub n greater than n. So this is just saying uh, if you want to find a point in the range of f that's really big, you can always do that no matter how big you want to find that point. In other words, there is a sequence x sub n in the closed interval from a to b with the absolute value of f of x sub n greater than n for all n. All right, time for balzano weierstrass Since the sequence x sub n is contained in the interval from a to b, it is bounded. And so the balzano weierstrass theorem implies x sub n has a convergent subsequence, say x sub n sub k, where n sub k is a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers. Uh, to say that 
you've got a subsequence means you're skipping some of the indices, so that's what this sequence is doing. A strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers is just going to skip some terms of the original sequence. So this subsequence has a limit. That's the point. It's a convergent subsequence. So let L be the limit of the subsequence, and then note that L is in the closed interval because the closed interval contains all its limit points. From here, we can see that F is not sequentially continuous at L. So the sequence X sub N sub K converges to L in the domain of F. However, the absolute value of f of x sub n sub k is always greater than n sub k, so that means the sequence f of x sub n sub k is not bounded. And because it's not bounded, it also does not converge. So f is not sequentially continuous at L. We found a sequence, the subsequence from this paragraph, we found a sequence that converges in the domain of f, but when you look at the outputs, you get an unbounded sequence, so that doesn't converge. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, f is not sequentially continuous at L, and because sequential continuity is equivalent to continuity, that means f is not continuous. So that's the end of the proof. If you look at these three paragraphs, they start with let f be a function which is not bounded, and it ends with, so f is not continuous, and that is the contrapositive of the theorem. So we're done. We proved the contrapositive, so we proved the theorem. And uh, that's all for now. So if you're looking for a real analysis tutor, you should know that I tutor online. And if you're interested, get in touch with me. My website is herndonmathservices.com, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.